सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ साइरस एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज अ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर हेयर इन गी कैंड सो टूडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सर्वर कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड द टाइटल ऑफ द टॉक वॉज एक्सप्लोरिंग सर्वर कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड एक्सप्लोरिंग राउटिंग पैटर्नस बट आई रियलाइज डेस्टरडे डैट दिस इज़ अ न्यू टॉपिक एंड अ ब्रॉड टॉपिक सो इट्स इट नीड्स अ सेपरेट टॉक एंड सम टाइम सो आई हैव एक्सक्लूडेड द राउटिंग पैटर्नस फ्रॉम दिस टॉक एंड वील लाइक मोस्ट पब्ली टॉक इन लेटर टाइम about the routing patterns and uh, yeah so i recently gave a talk on next 13.4 what's new in next 13.4 so you can check it out on geeky ants youtube channel and uh, yeah i'm also i am still in the phase of learning server components so if you feel that i am doing i am saying something wrong free feel to point me out so yeah let's start with the presentation uh, so before discussing server components we need to a uh, see that what is the problem what are the problems that we are facing with spa single page applications and server side uh, server side applications so if we see the server side uh, this spa so we can see that the client requests the server for uh, uh, when we type something on the uh, like if we type something local host 3000 we get a javascript bundle from the server if we want to boot up a react application so the server gives us the javascript files that execute on the browser and creates the react dom that we see on our browser so the time required to fetch data from the api that we uh, that we use in use effect is causing delay in meaningful interaction like uh i request a uh, i request a page from the react so once it gets mounted on my browser then the use effect gets called and we call our apis due to which we are seeing only the uh normal pages we are not able to interact with it all at all so it has a longer fcp longer fcp means the longer first contextual paint and so here's a diagram of the spa so you can see that server sends back mostly empty html script tag for react as you may know that it's the the html file that we get is empty and browser browser fetches the js bundle it runs the js bundles and create with your react code fetch some components need data and it requests that data and data is returned to the client react updates the dom that we call it as hydration so this takes a long lot of time and results in longer fcp so this is solved by uh, uh, server side rendering so let's go to server side rendering so what server side rendering does is that uh, i have a client my browser i get a i call a get request to my server to get a normal page and on the server only we uh, fetch our all our data in the server and uh, the server returns us the html plus css plus js and uh, still the hydration occurs but it is not uh, the fcp has improved because what i get from the server is the uh, html blank uh, the html template the with not a, with not much styling and js uh, js on it it's the normal html on the on the client side the J javascript gets executed and hydration occurs and all our event listeners and the browser apis that we can use get scored in the client so still uh, it has increased it has lower the uh, fcp but the time to interactive is still much more because uh, i get the html from the server but uh, once the hydration uh, fully occurs then only i can interact with my uh, components right so this is the uh, the diagram for the ssr so you can see that server passes passes the request run get server side props as you may know we call our apis and get server side props and uh, we use our data that is returned from server side props into the html on to the components so it runs the react code on server to generate html for user for user and html is sent to the browser then we then hydration occurs and we are able to interact with the page so initially we get that blank white page and uh, due to which uh, we can't interact with the uh, our components so it has longer time to interactive time so the solution for the both the problems is react server components plus streaming so you can see that if i have a browser and i call a call a get request on the server uh, what uh, react server components are that they are rendered on the server itself and they are sent back to the client and but for the some components like uh, uh let me explain here so this is the layout uh, you may have 
uh, gone through it so this is the nav bar this is profile this is post and this is comments so uh, these are let's say these are all the static page uh, all the static components and my the data that i want to uh, the data that i want to show the comments uh, uh, are there so this is an expensive component right because if uh, if you if we talk about server side rendering what it will do is that uh, the server will uh, get all the data for this component for this uh, these are the static for this component it will get the data and uh, it will the browser has to wait for all uh, for this comments part to get loaded uh, but uh, since navbar and post and profile don't need any data they can be directly sent to the browser so why are we waiting for comments right so if if it was a case like we can send all these three components to my browser first and when the comments uh, data gets loaded then we can send back uh, the this comments data to the uh, to my browser so that would be pretty fast right so similarly here you can see that browser request the data the server sees that i uh, i can send navbar profile and post which don't need any data as a first uh, html and once the and it's uh, pal it's parallelly fetching the data for the comments so uh, once the comments data is loaded it sends back uh, sends back a stream to the browser so you can see that uh, you may feel that uh, there was no lag in uh, lag on the browser you get all the Uh, all the static components first and when uh, you get the comments you can show a placeholder uh, instead of comments and when the comment gets uh, returned from the server in in form of a stream uh, you can interact with the comments also so this also happens in a single get request so once uh, you uh, fetch a request you get that uh, you get all the components server side uh, components Uh, that were rendered uh, on the server that are called react server components like card text here and you can uh, and after that is sent to the browser the uh, parallelly a stream is also returned in uh, for the comments right uh, so yeah so let's uh, see what are server and client components so uh, as you uh, as i've told earlier that what if what it could be like i could divide all my components into two into two categories one could be client components and one could be uh, the uh, the react server components so what i mean by react server components like they can they should be rendered on the server but for the client components they don't need any data interaction on the server they don't need any data so they can be sent directly to the browser so these data are called client components so you may see that this color signifies uh, server components and this color signifies client component so uh, let's see here so the navbar you may have you you may know that navbar is a static so we don't need something uh, that it need don't doesn't need any data fetching so it can be a client component the it can be a server component for client component you need uh, the search it, it can be a client component because you need to input your search queries into the search box so it it uh, uses the browser apis uh you you want to use use state use uh, use effect there in search so that part should be on the client itself because you can't run use state and use effect uh, the, all the other hooks on the server so server is uh, defined for fetching the data showing it to my component and returning back to the server similarly for sidebar you can see it is a server component and for main uh, this is a main is a server component button is a client component because you need to interact with the buttons you, you need to put on click handlers to it so we have divided our uh, these components into server and client components so yeah so what uh, in server components what we do is that uh, since uh, the components that were rendered on the server doesn't need to be sent to the browser to get executed the javascript bundle is very less because only the client client components needs javascript to get rendered on the a uh, browser because uh, due to the hydration because the javascript bundles are sent only for client components for server components we just get the data we just parse that uh, our components onto the server and they are sent as a uh, uh, as a react tree or a blob i'll tell you that later uh, that uh, they don't need any javascript to get executed on the client so you may see that uh, if we normally use all our components uh, like we do in react application uh, 
दिस इज द दीज आर द एन पी एम पैकेजेज आई एम इम्पोर्टेड एंड दे हैव अ बंडल ऑफ बंडल साइज ऑफ दिस दिस Uh, so they don't need any they don't need to be executed on client uh, on server on client right because what i am doing is i am getting the text and i am sanitizing the html and and i am rendering it so this can be shifted to the server components it doesn't need any uh, it doesn't need to be executed on the browser itself because the javascript bundle size has increased a lot right so uh, you can see that a simple hello world app that we write Requires sending over 70 KB of data just to have a dev. So if we don't need inter interactivity for a Hello World app, why are we sending my JavaScript bundles from server to client and they are getting executed and my uh, bundle size then by the size of the application is increasing. So we don't need any JS on my Hello World app. So I can shift my whole Hello World app to a server component. It can be get rendered on the server itself. It doesn't need any JavaScript uh, a JavaScript bundle. to send to the client to get to get that executed so uh, let's see uh, how we can how uh, the tree looks like when we have server components and client components uh, nested into each other so you can see that there is a server component of orange color so this is a react tree with a mix of client components server co components can have client components inside uh, as a child and client components can also have server components as the child you can see that react tree okay so let's see an example like let's go into detail like what i write uh, on server component and how they are sent back from the server to the browser so let's say i have a this is my client component it renders client component this is my server component 2 which renders server component 2 and this is my server component which i am passing these as children to the server component right so uh, if uh, what it does in it in uh, in the server itself uh, the we execute the react so the, what it does it that react creates a tree you can see that here so it's similar to what we write in jsx uh, the react dot create element it gives us this type of objects so yeah so if we see that i have a div server component here right so this is a uh, this is my app and this has a children inside these are my children inside of my app so one thing is created is div and the children is server component one here uh one second server component yeah so it will be server component one i have misspelled uh, misrighted it. it will be server component uh, one here here and in other other you can see that this is a server component 2 so the server component 2 also gets uh, ex uh, also gets uh, also gets converted to a react dot create element and the react dot create elements gives us this object so this is the type is diff and the children is server component 2 right so the all the server components that i have here are getting converted to the html tags you can see div here div here but if i see my client component here this client component so it uh, the object for it is something different this is a the type is react dot element and for in the type type of we see that this is a react dot module dot reference this is a new type that react has introduced uh, so why new, why it is <coughs> getting created like this so once uh, my server knows that what components i need to render on the client and what components i need to uh, render on the server it should know the difference right between both the server component client component so whenever it sees client components it it generates uh, this react dot module dot reference type of that of this uh, client component and the name is default and uh, the file name can be the file where my client component is located so this is the file i have look uh, this is the file and the children is client component here uh, you can see here so this is uh, the re what react is doing is that uh, it is differentiating between server components and the client components for client components it is generating this type of object and for server components it is generating this type of object uh, the html tags so let's see it in the image so you may see that the server components are getting rendered to the tags here 
and the kind components that needs to be rendered on the client only are uh, have id as a prop and this is an object itself and for this this is the html and for all the client components they have a id object and a props object that we are sending to the uh, browser so in the browser when the browser receive this tree it knows that uh, the bundler that if we use webpack the bundler knows that this is the client component here right so i get that html from the server components but it can a client uh, the bundler can identify that this is a client component it can execute uh, it can execute those client component on the browser right because we said that the client components need to be rendered on the browser so what uh, react does on the on the browser is that it executes dot executes those uh, client components uh, client placeholders are turned back into the components here so the server components don't exist just the tags are rendered here uh yeah so uh the the if uh on the browser if we get that these div html div tags uh, these are the server and for the client uh, after the uh, they, uh, after the this react tree is uh, obtained uh, the client uh, component gets uh, executed and all those on all those these holes are filled with the client components and uh, my whole react tree is reconstructed and uh, then it can be we can see that in the browser uh, so this is the diagram uh, i got it from the rsc of react server components so earlier it was the only this plot right client tree was there it used to render components to html and it would bundle components as code and you hydration would occur here user interactions would be uh, there uh, which uh, were executed by main.js file but now with the introduction of rsc we have server tree here and we have a client tree on the front end and this is this uh, is on the uh, server so it uh, the server tree that mainly comprises of the server components have uh, can access the file system database and internal services and it generates a tree like this uh, like this the react server tree and this is part and uh, the id and props the the client components that we generated on the server are passed as props they are uh, deserialized uh, they are serialized sorry they are serialized uh, and sent back and sent to the browser and the browser uh, deserializes those these client components and executes those uh, components on the uh, browser itself so this has in, uh, this has mainly reduced the javascript bundle size to a very 18 to 19 per, 18 to 29% the javascript bundle size has reduced because we are only passing uh, we are only executing my uh, react server components on the server itself there is no javascript uh, getting uh, getting executed to render those server components only the javascript for client components is getting executed and since the javascript bundle is very less uh, the browser can download it very fast and it can uh, enhance the performance of our app so other problems this is not the only problem that uh, is solved by like the javascript bundle is uh, reduced there are other problems as well so we don't need to write any get static props or get server side props inside of our components in next 12 in next 12 we used to write uh, all these functions to get our data on the server side but uh, there is no need of writing this so what we can uh, write now in server components uh, we use only async await to get that data i have created an example here so uh, this is my prisma client i have imported in my server component this is a server component and i get my all my users uh, using this query prisma.users.findmany i and i can render all my users into this and this is all execute all being executed on the server nothing is going on the client side no javascript bundle only this html this react tree is getting uh, passed to the browser only the dev html uh, the email phone all is, all it is getting passed as an html from here uh, so this was a tweet by theo so this is how i feel calling prisma directly in server components because earlier we used to write all these stuff in static props or server side props and uh, other problem that it solves is a waterfall problem 
सो वॉट यू कैन यू मे सी डैट हेयर डैट आई हैव अ रैपर एंड हैव अ कॉम्पोनेट ए कॉम्पोनेट बी हेयर एंड द रैपर इज गेटिंग सम डेटा फ्रॉम माइन ए पी आई एंड इफ लोडिंग इज ट्रू देन इट इज शोइंग लोडिंग एंड इफ लोडिंग इज इफ द ए पी आई कॉल इज सक्सीडेड देन इट इज रेंडरिंग द चिल्ड्रन सो फॉर कॉम्पोनेट ए ऑल्सो आई एम गेटिंग द गेस डेटा एंड इट इज ऑल्सो गेटिंग द कॉल फ्रॉम एम ए पी आई एंड शोइंग मे Uh, this result and similarly for component b so the comp so the child components have to wait for the parent components to get executed to get back the data and they then uh, once they are rendered they get their own loading states and they get their own data and finally we get to see our whole application so uh, the child components are getting are dependent on the server on the parent component so this is a waterfall problem uh, as it is not very user friendly so what a server components does is like uh, since in next 12.0 we what we used to write was that i used to write all my uh, apis in uh, on the root page and i would i would pass all the data to my uh, children components of that page right so it was very messy because i need to get all the data and uh, prop drill uh, to my components or i could use a state management but here uh since i can call my api in any component not page because you may see here this is a component this is not a page i can call any api inside my component so i can call my api in any uh, leaf node of my reactory so earlier it was fetch data in get server side process pass the data to my component 2 but now what i can do is indirectly component 2 i can fetch my data directly here and in component 3 if i have the same request Uh, i can fetch that data there also also in next 13 uh, the all the fetch request if i am calling a same api here and a same api here all the fetch request are cached here and the similar result is uh, shared for this component if this is uh, if this was executed earlier so there is no uh, need of calling uh, uh, an api same api multiple times and so yeah combined uh, so this was also a problem in next 12 that we couldn't uh create components that could have ssg ssr and isr only uh, only one thing could be executed at one time for a particular page so the all components have to be dependent on the uh, root page but now since i can call my uh, apis in my in the component itself i can uh, cache it i can revalidate it and i can refetch it on ev every time so this has the capability uh, this is given to us in next 13 and uh, automatic code splitting so in the server itself we can decide that what uh, what part what code should be uh, what part of application should be shown to the user because it, there is no point of sending the javascript bundle for the dashboard itself and for loading landing page itself so on the server itself i can uh, get my user in the component in the server itself i can decide which component i want to show uh, to the client uh, in the form of uh, react server components so we have automatic code splitting here and we don't need to write uh, react.lazy imports that we used to write in react and mass massive savings in bundle size as i said earlier uh, if we execute this on the server uh, this will have a zero javascript bundle size this will also have a zero bundle size nothing will be sent to the client and all it will be executed on the server and the bundle size would be almost zero and the server actions were also introduced where i can directly mutate my data uh, directly mutate the data on the database uh, from an async functions uh, this server functions you may see that i have a form here and i have a create user i can put a use user directive here and i can mutate directly directly from the component itself inside the database so this is very cool and uh, yeah so last thing the react server components are not equal to server side rendering so you can read that that code for server components is never delivered to the client this is the main part server components enable access to backend from anywhere in the tree whereas earlier it was top level page we can access a uh, backend in any leaf node of our uh, directory server components can be also be refetched while maintaining client side uh, client side state inside of the tree uh, there is a function called router.fetch that uh, can uh, get the server 
कॉम्पोनेंट्स अगेन एंड ह्यूज परफॉर्मेंस बूस्ट एट जावा स्क्रिप्ट बंडल इज स्मॉलर एंड फास्टर टू डाउनलोड बेटर एस सी पी बिकॉज द सर्वर डजेंट वेट फॉर द डेटा इट सेंड बैक्स ऑल माई सर्वर कॉम्पोनेंट्स डायरेक्टली टू द क्लाइंट एंड वंस द कॉम्पोनेंट्स वंस द कॉम्पोनेंट द सर्वर कॉम्पोनेंट दैट डीड्स डेटा दे आर डायरेक्टली स्ट्रेम्ड ऑन टू माई ब्राउजर थैंक यू